Good afternoon. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. I'm your host, Chris Dayhut, and for today's video, we're going to give your Raspberry Pi Pico the ability to see light. We're going to use a simple sensor called a photoresistor. They're very economical, and they are an analog device, meaning they'll give us a variable voltage, in our case, uh, depending on how much uh, brightness uh, in the form of light is provided to them. Now, they're very economical, as mentioned. I uh, went shopping for these on uh, Amazon. I think I paid $6 uh, for a box of 50 of them. And I'll show you the package here. Um, it's brand name Bojack. No idea what that is. Photoresistance. Obviously, we know the country of origin. Um, but it, they give a model number, maximum volts, which in our case isn't important because we're using it as a sensor, not as a driver. Um, but what they do tell us, which is pretty useless as well, is 50 to 100 K, uh, 50 to 100 K ohm, uh, it would be that much resistance at 10 lux of light. In truth, in our world, for what we're going to use it for, we're going to use it relative to our situation. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. It's quite easy to do. And uh, we're going to walk you through this uh, in a demo program. Now, another thing I'd like to point out to you, just so you can kind of get an idea what the top of this thing looks like, uh, this is what the surface looks like, all magnified. Uh, you can see this coil here. I'm assuming that's where the, we'll call it the variable resistor lives. And uh, these would probably be the two legs that are connected from down below, uh, where we're plugging it into our breadboard up to the surface. Uh, but essentially, it's a variable resistor sensing the brightness of light to vary the resistance that it's uh, providing. Wiring it up, uh, in uh, first we'll look at it in our fritzing diagram, is incredibly simple. Here's the little device. Uh, they will refer to it as a photo cell. Um, I'm in photography and in other uh, uh, areas of interest, and photo cells and photoresistors can have different meaning depending on uh, the application. I prefer to use photoresistor. I believe it defines the part better. Uh, basically, you got two wires coming out of that that'll go into your breadboard. We're going to connect one wire to 3.3 volt coming out of the Pico. The other wire will come back and go into ADC1, or analog to digital uh, uh, number one, uh, which we've replicated here on the breadboard. So you'll see our 3.3 3 volt wire out into one side of the sensor coming out back in to our ADC channel number one. Moving on to the programming, um, not a whole lot to it. Uh, this is the whole program and what this will do uh, is tell us a little bit about how bright the room is. Uh, but the first thing I'd like you to understand, and I'm going to show you a couple of things here uh, that'll help you to understand what we're seeing here. Uh, back on the bench, you'll see I've got another photoresistor, exactly the same as this one, connected to my multimeter. And in this level of lighting, it's showing 5.8 kilo ohms. And that's uh, what I've got listed here. Uh, bright room lit is 5.5 kilo ohms, and as we'll see in a minute, that's about a 58,000 uh, reading from our analog to digital circuitry in the Pico. I'm going to turn off the bench light, and that drops it down to, eh, it's going to creep down to about 27,000 ohms at that light level. And using a shield, I'm going to cover it up to get about a 65k ohm resistance, 65,000 ohms. And then finally, uh, try to fully cover it at about one point, uh, right about there, about 1.1.2 million ohms of resistance. 
The actual program portion is really uh, very simple and straightforward. Um, in another video in the past, I've gone through and explained the uh, analog to digital conversion in great detail, so I'll reference a link down below in the description so you can jump to that one and get a refresher if you're not comfortable uh, with this presentation. Uh, but we're going to import the machine library and a time library. We're going to create an object uh, that can read the analog signals, and we're going to call that a photoresistor. We'll jump into a constant continuous running loop, and every time through that loop, we're going to read the analog value stored in a variable called bright level. And then in this case, we're going to uh, take a look at what that level is, and depending on the level, uh, we're going to print a various messages depending on the brightness, either telling the person to wear sunglasses, or whether it's comfortable viewing, or get a flashlight, or get many flashlights, because it's really dark. Uh, then we'll slow down the loop uh, just a little bit so that uh, we can get a good scrolling speed and a good resolution of reads, but not so fast that we can't read uh, the output. So we'll go ahead and run this. And as you can see, I've got uh, the bench light is on, and it's very bright in here. Now what I'll do is I'll turn the overhead light down, and it's comfortable viewing for the most part. It's fine. A little bit going into the uh, still in the bright area or the dim area. Now what I'll do is I'll darken it up even further, and I'm going to get it down into that uh, roughly 60, 70 range of ohms. And that gets us into the lower uh, brightness level where it says get a flashlight. Now what we'll do, we'll really make it dark. It's telling us to get many flashlights because it's so dark. And that's a very simple demonstration of a photo sensor on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, you might ask, well, where would I ever use a photo sensor? Uh, perhaps the most common place you will see photo sensors used is in circuitry to turn on a light when it gets dark out. Uh, that's an energy saving technique, so you're not wasting electricity. Uh, having a photo sensor go through a microcontroller uh, can give you the ability so that you don't have to turn the light on at full blast. You could uh, put it in a PWM signal to turn on some type of lamp and uh, control the power going to it. Thus, you're not overpowering the environment. You're just giving it enough brightness uh, to illuminate the room and make it at a comfortable level. Uh, that's the most common and typical place that you'd see photo sensors, but uh, if you're into home automation, I'm sure you can come up with a lot of crafty ideas on how to utilize one of these in your next projects. So that's it for photo resistors. Very simple, very economical, and very easy to use. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. See you in the next video.